Hey, Dustin here. Really excited about Google's new Showcase shopping ads. Wanted to go over it with you guys real quick. Also give you a little bit of insight on how I think we're going to be using it for clients. So just stay tuned and we'll jump right in. Hey guys, so Dustin, PPC Pros. Just want to talk about the new Showcase shopping ads from Google. These came out about a uh, about uh, probably three weeks ago, and um, we were talking in the group about doing shopping ads and some best practices. And I realized I mentioned to somebody about Google Shopping and how uh, the, the the normal product ads take you to a product page. So when it comes to more generic terms, you want to be sure that you're controlling what products people see. Uh, for those generic searches. Well, this is actually a solution for that problem. You still will have to use negative keywords and things like that to sculpt the traffic. But this is the new Google Showcase shopping ads. And so the difference is that the original shopping ads would take you to a single product, whereas the new Showcase shopping ads basically give you like a header image or a product image and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. But you're able to scroll through and click through, uh, I'm sorry, like as a user, it's almost like the uh, Facebook uh, carousel ads where you can see multiple products or you can scroll through a, a variety of them. The good news is you get control. Uh, you can create an ad group with, with only certain products in it. You can create a, hem a header image, you get some text. So if I go ahead and choose Showcase Shopping, you can see right here. Um, I'm not going to read this to you, but basically you can either choose between what we just talked about, a single product, regular old shopping ad, or the showcase. Now there's a couple cool things I like about this. Number one is, I already mentioned for generic terms, you know, Google will, will pick if you have a thousand products that are all, let's just say, running shoes, uh, and somebody types in running shoes, then unless you've got a whole bunch of negatives everywhere else, Google is going to show whatever product they think is most relevant for that search which may not be the best product in, in your opinion or even in the consumer's opinion, but they're going to make that decision unless you have things in place like negative keywords and campaign priority. So sculpt that traffic and to tell Google where to send it. Uh, if you see right here, you're doing a, a bid or a cost per engagement bid. So this is not a cost per click bid in the sense that you're used to. So what happens is when you when your ad is shown, when people click on the ad, it actually expands. You know, let me actually, um, I believe I have the AdWords documentation on this right here. I do. And you can see right here, this is an example for Target on a mobile device. But you can see, it'll restart here. When somebody does a search, this is a mirror. People are going to see this, uh, this showcase ad right here. And when you click on it, the first click that they're about to do that opens the ad further is not charged to you only if they stay on this page for 10 seconds or click through to another product. So it's really great because you get people that can see a list of your products. I'll actually link to this page uh, in this video description. Uh, you can actually get people to click on your ad, look at multiple products now, and if they just back out in less than 10 seconds, no harm, no foul, there's no charge. If they click through to a more specific product, then um, you are charged per click. So it gives us a little bit more control, slightly different metrics to look at, but I think this is great for generic terms. If I pop back in here, I'm just going to go ahead and call it uh, demo ad group name. We'll set our bid to a dollar. And you can see here that you can choose all the products from the campaign, which I don't think is a good idea. Or you can choose a selection where you can use, um, you can use basically product types, item IDs, uh, condition, any other custom labels that you've set up. So it would probably make sense when you're creating your shopping feed to figure out what products you want. Is your you know these are probably going to be your best sellers or the lineup or most popular products. So it makes sense to have some identifiers in the feed that you can use later on for something like this. You would probably already do that for regular shopping campaigns, but this is another way um, to do that. I'm just going to choose all products right now. Hit save and continue. Okay, so you can see right here we have a header image, which is the image that's shown in the expanded ad. So basically you can use a crop version of it in the uh, collapse ad if you want. Um, you basically want to use an image that looks like it's more of a category specific. So 
in my mind, this is going to be great for, let's say, categories of products. Let's say you have, uh, you're selling shoes. So you want to create uh, an ad group like this for running shoes. So you may want to have an image that lines up with a generic, you know, running shoe search. Maybe you show multiple brands across across the most popular brands in this image. Maybe you have Nike, Reebok, whatever they are, and you have them in this brand. And when people click on the ad, it expands, and they can see, you know, maybe the top sellers are most popular in each category. Uh, you could also try using this for a brand-specific image, but from my understanding is these ads are not going to be showing as often for branded searches, or, you know, these are more for top-of-the-funnel searches. That's what Google is saying. They're going to use these shopping... Uh, showcase ad formats for so whether or not those will get enough or a lot of impressions I'm not quite sure but my thought would be you know category pages like running shoes hiking shoes uh, walking shoes you know things like that where there's gonna be a bunch of different a uh, bunch of different options and you could also use for the collapse ad a header image or a product image depending on whichever you want obviously a product image is going to pull directly from the feed the header image you're going to upload and uh, you can make it more generic and then you get some ad text you get a headline description which are both optional I would you might as well use it you have a final URL display URL and then you can name the ad one thing to note about the header image they don't want any promotional text in it they don't want anything any banners or crazy overlays I'm sure that there's I'm sure you can get away with a little bit of it but they basically want you to you know follow the same type of image uh, guidelines that you have for individual products where they don't like a lot of salesy promotional material so this is the new shopping ad format uh, I'm excited to see what it's going to do in the coming weeks and months so if you've got a new client for shopping I would highly recommend testing these out we're going to put them into a, its own campaign just to watch performance try to gauge whether or not we get better conversions off of top of the funnel search terms also look at the cost per click, look at uh, the, the engagement from the initial click to uh, what people are doing after they open the ad, are they clicking through, are they spending more than 10 seconds, you know, how often are we being being charged. I'm not 100% clear on all the metrics we're going to be able to dig into this with, but I wanted to let you guys know about it so you can give it a go and uh, I'll report back when I have a little bit more information on how it's working for us. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you have questions, Let's take a look, and once again, I'll post the documentation link from Google on these new showcase shopping ads in the description of this video. Thanks a lot.